In this video, you're about to learn exactly what I do as a SOC analyst on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, I can't show you what tools we use because I don't want to get fired, but I can provide close enough examples to explain what I do. So every day I do investigations into alerts. I dig through logs and archives to see if the alert is malicious or false positive. Now that might seem a little bit boring, but it's a hundred times better than calling Karen for the fifth time this week to explain to her that she needs to restart and not shut down her computer to not get locked out because they have an always on VPN. Anyways, let's get started. I just picked up an alert, assigned it to myself as the owner analyst. Machine learning via sensor-based ML. ML stands for machine learning again on msiexec.exe on this host name via CrowdStrike. First off, CrowdStrike is an antivirus solution that provides an AI-driven antivirus protection. Step one is to go into the alert, see what the alert was flagged on, and in this case, it was part of an executable that was part of an Autodesk installation. We can see that it is ran as part of a setup installation for Autodesk package under the processes section inside of CrowdStrike's logs, roughly two minutes prior to the executable being flagged. Now, Autodesk, in case some of you don't know, is typically used by architects and engineers. Okay, so it flagged on one particular executable. I checked to see who ran the executable under the logs in the processes section. Once you see who ran the file, I determine is this normal behavior for this type of person? What job title and type of work does the person do? In this case, the person in question was the director of merchandising, not exactly an engineer, but Autodesk can create 3D maps of maybe merchandising equipment or the building itself. So maybe something a director would want. If this was just a general merchandising employee, it would strike me as a little more odd behavior. Okay, so we've determined what was flagged and who did it. Now let's check the file that was ran. CrowdStrike is pretty good at providing hashes of the potentially malicious file. However, I did RTR into the machine and grabbed the file and its hash just to be safe. I ran the hash in VirusTotal to check its legitimacy and lo and behold, nothing malicious found. Okay, fantastic. We're seeing more and more that this is benign. We're just looking for any red flags at all that would point to this being malicious. At this point, we're fairly certain that it's not malicious. However, I do a deeper dive just to make sure something isn't buried during execution. Now we go into Crowd CrowdStrike's logs to check changes done to the drives and registry and check to see if anything is out of scope for Autodesk to perform while installing. All we see is expected writes into Windows folders and permission changes and registry that allows Autodesk to run its dependencies. There's no random folder paths during the drive rewrites or registry changes to odd places. The flagged executable is also inside of a, the expected file path. So far, so good. Just to be sure, we throw the flagged executable into CrowdStrike Sandbox. It does flag the file as malicious. However, that's only because of the APIs that it pulls and patches that it installs. There's no network traffic created by running the executable and everything looks as to be expected. At this point, we've checked the file, who ran it, and what exactly happened during execution. We can confidently say that this is a false positive and that the executable is part of Autodesk's very robust installation. We can unquarantine the file and write out our ticket notes with all the evidence we found to support our determination. We have to make sure that our notes are extensive as it covers our ass, <laughs> just to be frank, in case we missed something and we get in trouble. Again, I love my job and I don't want to get fired. And sometimes analysts miss stuff. That's why it's our, our job to make sure we do as extensive an investigation as possible. This particular investigation took about two hours. I'm new, so don't be surprised. Now repeat that investigation up until the end of the day and you have my typical work day. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that provided a little more insight into exactly what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. I know the last video, expectation versus reality, was a little vague on what I do. So I hope that clears it up. Please make sure to smash the like button and comment so that YouTube can push this to other aspiring SOC analysts and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Thanks again for watching. See you in the next video.